Okay, Derby Knights, the Emmys have just finished and we are here for our exclusive Gold Derby's post-Emmy coverage. And the big lead of the day, the big lead of tonight is that sort of past champ Succession and Ted Lasso were able to stave off a, a, a surging Abbott Elementary and surging Squid Game who were competing for the first time to take out best comedy and best drama series, Succession and Ted Lasso, the big winners. Great night for the White Lotus sweeping the categories. It was eligible in as well. I'll have an update from the big board, but we are ready to get down and talk Emmys with we believe, you know, you didn't need to stop believing for Ted Lasso with taking care of the uh, imaginary dead cat has been contained, so you don't need to worry about that getting on the loose. And we have our pineapple here ready to talk White Lotus. I, Matt Noble, am joined by Rob LeCuria, Joy Zang, and Christopher Rosen. And Christopher, I haven't spoken to you much about the Emmys this year. What's your big takeaway from tonight? For me, it was, I think, like you said, that Ted Lasso was able to hold off Abbott Elementary. I feel like we all, at least, are, I felt I was overthinking it a lot. I think, like, especially after the Creative Arts Emmys, uh, Abbott winning casting, I was like, I think that the tide will turn and it will probably win series. And I was feeling pretty good about that throughout the show. And then uh, when it won, when Ted Lasso won directing, I was like, that's it, wrap it up. Uh, and then won, won series. So I, I thought that was pretty good. And I think, like, for a show that could have had a lot of upsets in a lot of different categories. I'm thinking like drama actor. I convinced myself Bob Odenkirk was going to win or maybe, you know, whatever, because he had not faced off Lee Jung Jae in, in the winter awards, but no, they kind of went pretty much expected shock winners in every category. I would argue, except maybe supporting actress in a comedy, Cheryl Lee Ralph, I found to be a pretty surprising and uh, wonderful winner. So that was my top line thoughts. Yeah. Joyce. I thought you were going to say the story of the night was Shirley Ralph's speech. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think that that is the moment. Um, and I think, yeah, um, I, I also had Ab Abbott winning series, but I wasn't feeling great about it because it seemed so split comedy. And I, I did have, I had Ted for like a hot second and then I switched to Abbott. Um, but I had Ted second because I felt like they could just default back to it because um, like the, the comedy race is so scattered uh, and they did like once Jason won again, <laughs> I was like, okay, it's winning. Um, yeah. And it didn't win any creative arts. And I know a lot of people were spooked by that, um, but it just shows how strong above the line it is just like succession, you know, succession was able to win casting at creative arts um but Abbott is just like another Stranger Things on their when they see us like it has kids it won casting for the kids and none of those shows won series um and Abbott also didn't have a directing nomination so that stat upheld again too mm, yeah what it what Rob talk to us my felt my compatriot my Australian compatriot um my fellow Sydney cider mate I um, I, I'm really thrilled for most of the winners. And so, like, I, I had Ted Lasso for a long time, took it out this morning. <laughs> Those last minutes with Jeruz, I always tell people, don't do it, don't do it. And what the hell did I do? I did it. I did it twice. Well, the other one was for Julia Garner, <laughs> took her out, put in Jong Hyun. Dumb. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't really I don't really care about predictions anymore. I just care about who won, and I'm very happy for Ted Lasso. Season two was amazing. And it, it, it even won directing, which surprised me um yeah i thought it was really great and on the drama side i really thought thought squid game was gonna maybe take that one out too although i expected succession to take it and i feel like it's just the right winner it's it really is the most um, uh, impressive drama series on the air at the moment in terms of prestige dramas and the white lotus are very very happy that it won so many awards tonight very deserving um I was really happy with a lot of the winners, to be honest. Um, even the Cheryl Lee Ralph thing, which I thought could have happened, but wasn't didn't really see it coming. And her speech was just phenomenal, one of the best speeches I've ever seen. It reminded me of this is for all the fat girls when Cameron Manheim did that years ago. That was something very out of the blue and interesting. And I think Cheryl Lee Ralph did it again. Um, but I'm gonna have more to talk about when we start bitching about the things we didn't like, because I got a lot of that. But I'll just wow. I'll wait for my turn. 
Yeah, yeah. stay with the positive for now. And um, we've got um, – so I've updated our Emmy board. It's closed off. No more Emmys are being given out this year uh, for primetime television. And um, please correct me if I'm wrong about anything. But we have – look at that. White Lotus, 10 wins at one Five from five tonight, and it won five last weekend. The Creative Arts Emmys to bring it up to ten. Uh, Squid Game with its two wins tonight, and directing and lead actor bring it up to six. And Euphoria with the win for Zendaya brings that show Euphoria up to six. So even though they weren't able to take the big prize tonight, uh, Euphoria and Squid Game um, of the sort of uh, non-limited series crop did really well stranger things stayed on the five at one last weekend and uh on four we have ted lasso that won none at the creative arts last week it just came to the party tonight and picked up comedy series lead actor supporting actor and maybe the biggest surprise of all it's wins tonight best directing in a comedy series we'll unpack that a bit later succession which won the casting award has gone uh, last week um, has gone up to four with its three wins tonight. Drama series, uh, uh, drama series supporting actor and writing in a drama series, and we have um, Abbott Elementary, which won that casting got that nice little casting surprise last week. Has won writing for Quinna Brunson and that supporting actress win, which actually means like. You know, the cast has done very well. Like, they won the casting award. Uh, the lead actor won for, uh, for for her writing on the show and um, the supporting actress won for her acting. So uh, a lot of love for the actors on that show in different uh, ways. Uh, Dope Stick, uh, the other limited series to win uh, multiple Emmys with Michael Keaton's win tonight, pops up to two as well. And then we have shows like Last Week Tonight with his extra win and Lizzo's surprise win in the reality show brings uh lizzo's watch out for the big girls should have watched out for it um moves up to to as well so very good any any questions about anything on the board guys or any um i don't know anything that i've gotten wrong have i not moved up something how would have or given too many emmys to something did lizzo win three all up i can't i think that might have been maybe I, i don't remember but it doesn't I think it was yeah it was sorry no you're right it was on two so there were so many on two last week i had it a bit yeah there. i, I know it up to the other two zones so yeah that's up on three but, um as you well, know what so. just if, speaking of lizzo actually because and by the way i just yeah, love this board i just love it matt we can't have a emmys without your board now like it's just mandatory that we have the board the, the noble board um I was, I yeah you next time I, I know you probably can't drill holes into that particular wall because you don't own it um um <laughs> Because you're at work, um, I, I I was kind of impressed that Lizzo won. I was disappointed for RuPaul's Drag Race because I think that is of the best competition program on the air by far in terms of its production values and its casting and everything. But Lizzo's um, show is also pretty good, I guess. I've only seen two episodes; it's not really my thing, so I, I haven't watched the whole thing yet. But I loved her spe- uh, acceptance speech. I thought she was she's just such a compelling performer. And no wonder she's such a you know huge star because everything she seems to touch these days turns to gold. And um, maybe we should have more of us should have seen that win coming. Mm, yeah, no, that's fair. What was um? Do you want to comment on that particular race since we're on it? Um, no, that was. I mean, I I moved her up after her two uh, or the show's two wins last week. Um, but it's, it's funny because I think a lot of people were feeling the same way about a black lady sketch show, uh, when I won directing over SNL, um, and yet SNL still won. Um, and, but like the upset happened here, but I think it was easier for, uh, Lizzo to win with, like, uh, with more nominees and like fewer amount of votes. Um, and like you know, SNL is still like a legacy show. So yeah, and 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 so the real story of Saturday Night Live is like that's its only win this year. It usually yeah, and it like completely oh. bombed in nominations. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it it didn't win directing for Don Roy King's farewell season. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, that so. that that felt like a very lazy win. Yeah, and yeah, I I was the same. Like I was thinking. 
or maybe Black Lady Sketch going out said I completely rested on the uh, reality competition program, even though we did see some similar signs last weekend that Lizzo was really one to watch out for. Um, uh, and John Oliver wins again. Best Variety Talk Series um, continues that uh, very impressive run. Now, now it's like who's going to beat him? Like we got Lizzo to stop RuPaul. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, Chris, do you have any thoughts on the variety or reality categories from tonight? I mean, for I... variety, certainly, it, like, when is John Oliver ever going to lose? We talked about, Joyce and I had talked about this, too, recently. It just feels like he'd have to leave, I think. I don't even think there would, unless there's, like, a brand new show that starts that people are, like, very fascinated with, kind of like Lizzo style here for this year. But I just don't see any way he would ever lose. I don't even think people, like, are, you know, are they even watching any of these shows anymore? They're just like, oh, yeah, John Oliver win. That's fine. Uh, this felt very yeah. rote. But that was why I think the Lizzo win was so surprising because they went rote with so many of these categories, right? Like John Oliver and SNL uh, and then Lizzo beat through Paul. So that, that was actually a pretty fun win, too. It's, it's interesting that all the wins we're talking about that were actually, like, memorable and good are the ones that were unexpected. <laughs> Maybe they yeah. should try try to mix it up a little next year. I don't know. If they want to run a better broadcast, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, you said you had plenty you wanted to complain about. What What is the top of your list of uh, gripes or list of I complaints? think um, I have no real issue with any of the winners, surprise, surprise. I mean, because it is what it is. Uh, but what I'm really getting sick of is the way the Emmys just have, and, and other award shows, to be honest, have zero respect for the what actually matters, and that is the nominees and their performances or their work. And then the winners who get to go up on stage and have a moment that they've been building for their whole career, many of them, um, and play them off so that we have more time for care commercials and stupid interpretive dances to Law and Order SVU. And um, even when the presenter gets up there to present the award, they spend a good 30 seconds just reading out this dri drivel. It's like, get up there. We've seen the clips. Open the envelope say it, then the winner can come up and they can talk and just let them, even if they have a list, it doesn't matter. Let them have their moment. And to see Jennifer Coolidge um, played off and she tried her best to make it work for her, but they just really said, no, nah, we're done, you're off. That's disgusting. And then we had that Kia commercial, which I thought was fine, but put that on YouTube maybe and we don't need to see that on the show. And I'm really fired up about this because I feel like, you know, I'm in my mid-40s now. And so I've been watching award shows and all kinds of shows like this for many, many, many years. And I remember back in the day when award shows were something really special and we get all these amazing moments and we talk about them for months. And these days they go on social media and we talk and we, we see memes of these things. And these days it's like there are no moments. Well, there are a few because some of the winners just make it happen, like Cheryl Lee Ralph and Lizzo. But otherwise it's just sorry to, to, to swear, but it's just all bullshit. It's just like... They just want to churn through it like it's – they don't do, – do these people who make the award shows actually care about what they're doing? So I just feel like we need a, a rethink about how award shows are presented. We need to go back to the classic way of doing things, maybe let the winners speak. Otherwise, just reinvent the wheel because that Emmys show was so boring and just like the Oscars this year were terrible as well. And it's just – I'm just kind of done. We've, we spend months on this stuff, us as a collective – and it's a long Emmy season, and we get rewarded with that. That's that's crap. Okay, that's all. Oh wow. Okay, um, Joyce, what 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 are your thoughts on the show? Tonight? Um, I do not disagree because it was hella boring, and I was <laughs> to multiple people like like two hours before the show started. I was like, the Emmys feel very anticlimactic this year because it feels like it just like crept up <laughs> on us. Yeah. You know, like I feel like. Um, there was not a lot of like hype or promo in the lead up. Um, and yeah, it just felt like it was something they needed to get over, even though it's on Monday, but they've had Monday ceremonies before, um, NBC's done that before. So it's, yeah, but it, it didn't feel like there was anything to look forward to, even though there were a lot of exciting races and we had some great upsets tonight too. Like the one thing I do like about the Emmys is like, it can still offer, some nice surprises which the oscars did not do this year at all so that's that's why like 
it, it was still, the, the show itself was exciting because of the moments from the nominees. And yeah, like they cut short a lot of those moments that could have made the show even better, like Jennifer Coolidge. She should have pulled a Scott Frank and just kept going. So, um, and, and yeah, like there were just way too many random montages. <laughs> like I have no idea what was that about. Because they didn't even do one for limited series. They just started hmm. with drama. So they just completely skipped over limited. And then you had to, like, how, how much do these networks pay to get, like, a 30-second clip of La Brea played? I mean, I guess that's NBC. But, like, Amazon, you know, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. You have, you have to play a clip from the show before you introduce the actors. Like, it's completely yeah. ridiculous. Like, Jennifer Coolidge could have had those 30 seconds to finish her speech. Hmm. What um what do you think, Chris? Yeah, I thought I, th I actually thought the opening was awful. I, I not just because it was so the interpretive dance thing. I think I was as bad as the Snow White uh, Rob Lowe disaster from the infamous Oscars uh, in, in 1989. And then to do that, and the way they just kind of staged the whole opening, and then Oprah came out and was doing like, here's what the Emmys are, like how to Google the Emmys. Basically, I found that totally ridiculous. And then the first award is Michael Keaton, and he obviously is a great winner and a loves to speak and his speech was great but now you're already like it was like 25 minutes into the first commercial break and then it felt like the whole show was just in catch-up mode so they're just rushing off every other winner besides michael keaton and maybe like lizzo i think they gave a little more time but everyone else towards the end was just like wrap it up wrap it up 30 seconds you have no time to get up there not even to get up on stage before the clock is already down and i think that really really ruined a lot of the winner speeches towards the end because they weren't it was just very rote, I felt. And they had that little, like, Chiron at the bottom where they, clearly they were like, thank these people so you don't have to thank them in your speech. But nobody seemingly realized that that was on there. So they were just kind of doing it. I thought all of that was really bad. And I thought a lot of the uh, forced NBC promo was also uh, just heinous. Uh, but I thought Keenan did actually a good job. And he was very funny when he was able to be given the chance to be funny. So I don't know. I, I don't know how to fix it unless it's just as like maybe find better producers and directors who understand this stuff and like kind of like understand that you can't waste 25 minutes in the opening and then expect to end right at 11 o'clock Eastern and not burn through all the big awards by the end. It just doesn't, it'll never work. They're, they're, they can't make up time on these shows. So like you have to actually kind of maybe start killing your darlings in the beginning and then worry about like folding that stuff in at the end of your under, which you never would be anyway. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything we liked about the show? Like you were saying, Chris, there, that uh, Kenya actually did a pretty good job as host. I mean, the thing I liked the most, and I saw a couple of people maybe mention this in the chat, was Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez legitimately howling, laughing. Every joke they had there landed perfectly. They were so funny. I know they were, that was like a tease that they should have hosted the Oscars this year and they weren't able to. Uh, absolutely, they should get them to host the Oscars this next year. They're just so funny together. And they work so well and they just, it was just perfect. I thought they were so funny. That was literally the only thing I laughed at the entire show, maybe, but they were just so good. Joyce or Rob, was there anything you liked about the show? Um, I like that part too. I also, I didn't mind um, Mindy and BJ's banter about episode counts. <laughs> yeah. Because I grew up with 22 episode seasons too. So sometimes 24, sometimes 30. So mm -hmm. I remember, you know, I watched 90210. They had summer episodes. Um, yeah, so I like that dunking on now a very limited order uh, episode series. Um, not limited series, but um, I'm trying to think of, like, what else I like besides, like, winner moments. Um, I like Bill Hader wearing a mask. He was, like, the only one in there wearing a mask. Um, I don't, yeah, like, I'm, like, I... The things that pop first into my head are things that I don't like. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> most most of the presenter banter was terrible, um, mm. and yeah, just a complete waste of time. Yeah. yeah, and the issue is like it's this is not the first uh, award show that we've seen. You know, there we could. Why can't we learn? We I'm talking collectively, the royal we learn from mistakes of the past. Presenter banter is usually cringeworthy. Cut it or get a really good writer like Bruce Valanche or something like that to really spice it up. Um, Keenan was fine. He was, when he did his monologue, that was funny. That was good. 
but we don't need interpretive dance. We've moved on from the, um, you know, that that old school Saving Private Ryan interpretive dance bullshit that we used to watch back in the 90s. Like, we don't do that anymore. We've moved on. Let's, I know that this is going to be divisive, but let's try to cater some of the show to things that are quicker and more easily digestible because this is what the TikTok generation kind of expect. I know they're not watching the show, but make things like a little bit more snappy and quick and no, we don't need a three-minute Kia commercial. I keep going back to that because it was just so ridiculous and so random. And then, of course, finally, give us those moments, those really, really lovely moments, maybe a quick tribute to someone where, you know, someone's in tears about something that's happened over the year or give us like the best that the saddest moments from the year like you know this is us and stuff like that but just give us something to chew on because it was just all like nothing and what chris did is so right it was so rote and we don't want that why why am i tuning into this why am i wasting yeah. half of my day watching this yeah um let's so yeah we've talked about that show let's talk about some of the winners some of the like categories that um decided we've spent so much time stressing over a lot of these races and now all that uncertainty is gone um let's take uh let's uh should we start with drama or comedy category uh let's go with drama let's go with drama um how like so succession it won casting last week it then came tonight it won a few awards but squid game was winning a couple too were you guys when we got to that final envelope wondering is it squid game or is it succession is that how it had crystallized in your your head no i didn't no, think yeah i didn't have that even yeah. for a second <laughs> no <laughs> the succession i thought or, succession was going to win the whole time yeah. it, won, it won writing and obviously i didn't think it was going to win directing because of the split and the Matthew McFadden one actually I thought was like a great sign that they actually paid attention to the show yeah. because like we've talked about like Kieran Culkin is like the flashier role, easier to imagine him winning for that. And that Matthew one means that people actually paid attention to how good he was on the season. And that was like, I was like, oh, it's definitely going to win. Even, and Lee Jung Jae I thought was, I mean, he was definitely, I think, ahead in our odds. He was probably the <laughs> favorite to win because of he won ev everything else in the winter and, and all those things. So I, that did not really surprise me. The directing win... I kind of maybe hope Dick did Ben Stiller. And I felt like in the room, the, the response to Ben Smiller, Stiller and Severance was incredibly high, but obviously Squid Game won. But so I, I, I still you thought it's a good the pause meter. You can a little, <laughs> but I mean. He did like, yeah, he did get a lot of loud applause for that. But um, yeah, no, I, I never doubted Succession for a second. I, I think some people were also scared last week that it only won one. Mm -hmm. creative arts but it, it was an important one it was casting so um yeah and you know ted damon win casting so uh and and yeah i never thought it was winning directing because of the triple nominees um and yeah but like it was always locked for writing and i think there was just never a consensus runner-up to it um to take it down like you know in the winter it seemed like it was like Squid Game, like, I mean, yeah, like Squid Game was like the obvious number two, but then obviously we got like Severance and everything over, over the spring. But I made this comparison last week. Like it, it just felt like the SAG Awards where Squid Game can win the individual prizes, but it still is not strong enough to take down Succession for the Ensemble Award. Yeah, the interesting thing for like um, Succession and Squid Game is like Succession, I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, won all the categories where it um, only had one nominee right like when squid game beat succession it had two like there were two successions so there could have been a bit of vote splitting at play um in support there actor, were multiple squid game and succession and supporting actor yes so it sort of cancels each other out there like but it shows if anything succession is strong enough to overcome that in some cases but um when it was just one squid game one succession um it was um well, I guess there was only drama series which had just one Squid Game or one succession. Yeah. Well, they I, both well, lost um, supporting after it. I was um, worried about Squid Game, actually. Like, I, I figured I was always trying to work out what's the show that could take down succession. And when Squid Game wasn't able to win for Jung Ho Yon or Young Su or Park Hae Su in supporting, I was like, oh, okay. So I think I'm overestimating Squid Game. I was very worried that Lee Jung Chae wouldn't win 
best actor and I was because that I mean to me that was the most competitive category of the night and then I suddenly got this flash that like oh I think Bob Odenkirk's actually going to win this and then my, our colleague Marcus Dixon was going to give me grief for the next six months that didn't eventuate but yeah I was a bit concerned about Squid Game not even being the show that was going to take down Succession and then that's why I just felt so comfortable that yeah after Succession won um, writing and Matthew McFadden I was like yeah okay this is happening is there a category in the drama side each of you want to just highlight or talk about something you're particularly happy about or not happy about, um, Chris? I mean, I mentioned this already, but I was very thrilled with Matthew McFadden. I, I thought yeah. he was, he absolutely should have should have won. I, Tom, it was definitely Tom's season to me, uh, and I was thrilled to see him win. And and then they played him off after 25 seconds, which was great. A great sign for the night and how it was going to go. He was like the second award, and they're already over on time. And like, wrap it up, buddy. Sorry, here's your big moment. I guess it was perfectly Tom-esque. They yes. just like, put <laughs> overboard immediately. But I was like, this poor, All this right, poor so. guy. <laughs> Yeah. It, it would have been better if like Sarah had won right after him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. But then they like rushed off Julia Garner too. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Remember back in the they day got, like, when seven Julia seconds Louis, Remember back in the day when Julia Louis drives used to do stuff like a Tony Hale to come up with her and whisper in her yeah. and stuff. How funny would it have been if uh, Nick Braun had come up with Matthew McFadden and they'd had some that would have been plan. so good. Yeah. But Joyce, of course, you had they can't. They can't do that because there's no time. When Jennifer Garner won, I, I realised, wow, this is three Emmys that she's won. Uh, that's probably the first time that's happened during this new way of voting, or this relatively new way of voting without the panels where it's not about tapes. She won again and again for the second time. She's the only win from Ozark, I think. Um, so that show, the Emmys are not very sentimental. That show is now sailed off into the sunset, having only won the last its last two seasons just for Julia Garner. Um, yeah. So, and it's, yeah, it's I, only other award is directing for Jason Bateman, so it's never that's one right. to a little yeah. line. Yeah. This Joyce time went with, like, with Julia Garner that's winning, I wonder if you guys think this too. With like her winning, and I felt like a lot of these where there were like multiple options and they defaulted to like the, the previous winner. So like her for supporting actress or even like Ted Lasso for comedy series when you could argue like Abbott or Hacks or Only Murders had like a strong shot. Was it, you guys think it was just like they were overwhelmed with the choices and then just went like, I'll just pick the person I liked previously. It's fine. <laughs> or like Jason too for best actor. I just found those like, so even though they were like, it's like in hindsight, of course they all won. I was like, how did they, like, I did not expect Jason to win. I did not, like Julia Garner, I did not pick. I had like, you know, uh, I forgot who, I think I had a, uh, I, I mean, I had Julia well, and then I was like stupid today because I, I only had like a uh, Squid Game winning one. And I was like, no, I think it's going to win two. <laughs> and then I couldn't decide if it's going to win directing or supporting actress. And then I picked the wrong one. <laughs> so, um, but no, I had Julia this whole time um, because of that, because I, I felt like the category was like kind of messy, not messy because like they're all bad, like messy because they're all good. Mm -hmm. um and like most of them except for maybe like jay smith cameron you could make a case for winning um so i just felt like she could win again because it felt kind of similar to how she won her second emmy yeah no it's very fair any other uh drama categories anyone wants to touch on no let's um, jump over to comedy then the big Ted, Ted Lasso had the big the big victory. Um, sort of weird that Hannah Waddingham wasn't able to win with all the other Ted Lasso victories that were coming in. But that was um, nice that uh, Abbott Elementary was able to take that out. Um, what, how was Ted Lasso able to do this? What was the strength of that show in taking out Best Comedy Series? Any answers, anyone? Beats the hell out of me. I, in, a, in a good way. I'm thrilled that Ted Lasso. It's a great season. season. Great se season two to me was better than season one, and that's saying something. Um, I really don't know. I, I just thought. It, I think Joyce hit the nail on the head earlier. It's something that I said in our pre-show. It felt like the default choice. If there's so much, if it's so crowded, and you have so many choices, because there was, you know, there were five shows that were really gunning for the win. Although I think mm. we might have slightly overestimated Barry, ultimately. And I always thought only Murders in the Building was going to be stronger as well. That didn't um, win anything mm. tonight. But I just feel like Ted Lasso is still beloved. It's a feel-good show. It's very well made, highly respected cast and crew. It makes sense now. I just, I really did kind of buy into the the uh, 
the theory that Hacks is also as just as equally beloved as Ted Lasso is, and then Abbott Elementary being the breakout broadcast sensation. Uh, that, that's why it just seems so, like, it's so hard to kind of figure out or pinpoint how Ted Lasso did it. I think it's just lots of strong shows. You only really needed, what, like an eighth or a little bit more than an eighth, I suppose, of the vote to, to take this one out, and that's how it was able to do it. Yeah, I think, like, with a show like Hacks, like, even though we've seen it quite strong with the Emmys, it hasn't, like... It hasn't done as well in categories where Ted Lasso's been sort of strong or hasn't had vote. Like it won running and directing last year, but there were some multiple nominees from Ted Lasso splitting the vote potentially there. And um, Gene Smart's obviously won, but that like there's no Ted Lasso candidates in there. So it's probably not done as well in sort of when it's been going ahead there with places where Ted Lasso is particularly strong. Yeah. What, uh, what do you think, uh, Chris? Yeah, I think I think a lot of part of the reason it won is similar, like what we were saying for Succession. I think in the end, people just like Ted Lasso, and so like there's a broad enough coalition of people who enjoyed it that it won series, and obviously Jason won actor, and Brett won supporting actor. Uh, I was, I I think Hacks felt like th- my impression of season two is it's actually not as good as season one, and I thought the finale of set Hacks season two is the best episode of Hacks so far. So that's like you end off on a high note. But I think a lot of it just coalesced around Gene Smart, and that was how they honored that show, and it won, and that's great. And we could send it off into the sunset. And then Only Murders, I love a lot, and I was surprised it didn't do as well at Creative Arts Emmys. I'm hoping maybe season two will actually do better. But I thought it would maybe get a little bit of a season two bump for season one, like Ted Lasso did last year, season one bump. Uh, season <laughs> While season two was airing, obviously, season one bump. Um yeah, I don't know. And and Abbott maybe coming back again next year. I, I guess for Hannah Waddingham, I, Joyce, I, I feel like mentioned this early, a lot of – I think Juno Temple was really great in season two of Ted Lasso, and I think she may be more vote-splitted Hannah Waddingham than, uh, Cheryl, than Janelle James and Cheryl Lee Ralph. And I think that was actually helped. But that, that might be why Cheryl Lee Ralph was able to win what I imagine was a close race. Hmm. Joyce, any thoughts? Um, yeah, uh, the Shirley Ralph thing, I, (laughs) I like seriously thought about switching her this weekend because my, uh, like regular friends, like who are not like, don't care about awards at all. Like they prefer her. I, like I asked them, like, who would you vote for between the two of them? Like Janelle or Cheryl? And they both said like, they would vote for Cheryl Lee Roth, even though like they find Janelle really funny. But I think there's, you know, there's something about Barbara. Um, it's similar to like the Matthew win in supporting actor. It's like, if you actually like pay attention to the show, I think there's a lot like deeper appreciation of their characters. And, you know, she's a legend. Like this is her first Emmy nomination after like 40 plus years in the industry. Um, yeah, so that was great. And yeah, like the Ted stuff, uh, yeah, you know, like the all the series winners were the nomination leaders, you know, Succession 25 nominations, White Lotus, Ted 20 nominations, like they they just won out. So mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I and, think like yeah. Abbott, Abbott is something, you know, this is a good um, uh, showing, like it won three awards this year. That's great for 13 episodes. It was a mid-season replacement last season. Um, yeah. Like mm-hmm. big awards, that's great. So I think it's like, tease them up well for season two and maybe it'll actually get some other below the line nominations for season two and maybe a couple series who knows yeah like it's an ensemble workplace comedy that just works and people feel good about it like this could be a show that does very well in its second or third season at the emmys like you know um it, it, it seems to like and the fact it did so well this year like Look at how offers broke out for season two and season one of that was ordinary, you know? So mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm very excited for what could happen with Abbott at the Emmys. I think I wouldn't discount incumbency too. Just like we've seen in this category, Veep wins three years in a row, 30 Rock wins three years in a row, Modern Family wins five years in a row. In a split field, it doesn't hurt to just go with the one that's won um, last year as well. Um, and I, and um, yeah, so um, I'm about to invite our next panelist to come join us, guys. But are there any last thoughts or reflections or a category that you were just itching to talk about that you didn't get a chance to yet? Not particularly. Uh, no, I mean, limited was just so boring. 
<laughs> but I am happy for Mari Bartlett and Jennifer Coulson. Oh, I'm very happy. For I'm very happy for Michael Keaton, but like I, I feel like he requested to go first or have his category be first. <laughs> so he can leave. That was a good yeah. call. Like they knew a big name was going to win that category. It's probably not like, but yeah, I think that was a good decision to open with that. Actually, talking about all of our decisions, like I think like open with Michael Keaton winning an Emmy kicks the night off well. You had to make sure he was not going to be in the bathroom. So. Yeah, exactly. But no, it was good. Um, I love White Lotus, so I'm just so happy that did so well. I think it was the mini series of the year, but nice dope stick could win a big one as well because that was a great show. Well, um, I'm inviting our other panelists to join. Who is our next panel? I believe. Oh no, there's, we're, in, we're in for some trouble with Charles Bright, David Buchanan, and Tony Ruiz. Um, and, oh no, I have no, oh, no idea what they're going to say. Um, thank you. So much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joyce, Chris, and Rob. Your insight and analysis is always very valuable. Take care of the imaginary dead cat. We're looking after it well. Don't you worry. It'll <laughs> say we'll keep it alive, but it's already dead, so it's not too much wrong we could do with it. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks, guys. Okay. Charlie, what's at the forefront of your mind right now? We're dying to hear um it's it it's always tough to judge these things in the immediate aftermath you know i'm i'm you know you're still trying to process everything um I, i'm just thinking like you know the ceremony was so i think the best way to describe the ceremony was disorganized um especially like and i think the the epitome of that was how you had like different places where people were presenting from and it felt like sometimes people didn't know where to walk uh during their uh it, it's almost like whatever the golden globe tv categories come up and you always have to have and they're always at the back of the at the ballroom the beverly hilton they have to navigate that whole thing before they before they did the whole thing where they're like no you could just go around and then just come up on stage um it's it, it it was, and and also the, so that's why I think about the ceremony. The the bits were just just did not land for me, and it did. And the worst thing is is that it did is that it felt like a lot of them did not land with the audience. Sometimes there's that different, there's that there's that there's that uh, that difference where it may not work over television, but in the room it can kill. It just it did not feel like that was going on there. Um, and when it came to the winners, um, I really thought Abbott even towards the end, even after Ted Lasso won directing, I still thought that Abbott had, I was, I was thinking that Abbott had it. Um, and, right. and of course uh, I was, uh, uh, but I, in the end, I'm glad that Ted Lasso won, not just a, a, because I think Ted Lasso season two has been a fantastic season of television. I've rewatched it several times. It's still insanely funny. I love that they chose uh, for the comedy montage, the, uh, Renaissance portrait of masculine melancholy moment, which is my favorite moment from season two. Um, and uh, but I was I was really also hoping that Squid Game was going to pull it out, and I thought it, it it really would. I was really in suspense, but you know, Succession did it. And Succession is good, so I can't complain about that. I, I'll find something else to complain about. <laughs> Tony, what do you think? I'll, I'll think of something. Tony, I'm not I'm not really going to complain about any of the winners with the exception of um, Barry not getting the respect for season three that it deserved. Um, but I will complain about the ceremony, which is one of the worst I've ever seen. Um, I thought it was a, a train wreck. I think nobody had the helm. I think nobody knew what they were going for between the, uh, between the opening moments, uh, the, the opening, you know, interpretive dance remix things that nobody ever wanted, and to, to, of which only one of those shows that they did it for was a nominated show that evening. <laughs> right, right, and they do that, and then it leads into this weird uh, Oprah platitude speech that I was like, I "Is this an Amway convention? What are we doing here?" Um, it, it it just made no sense. And then the, it just seemed to careen from one bad idea to the other, um, um, culminating in whoever made the terrible decision to say, hey, let's put a like a, a two-minute long Kia commercial. I don't care how much money they paid. 
Jennifer Coolidge talking is worth more than a Kia commercial Damn right. broadcast. Um, it was just one bad idea after another. You know, it was funny that they did a they did a Simpsons bit, which was similar to a bit that they did 30 years ago um, when the Simpsons presented an, a, an Emmy to Ted Danson, who won his first Emmy for Cheers. I was like, really? We've done this bit before. It, it, it was just seemed like a recycle of ideas that left nowhere to go. Um, thankfully, thankfully, there were moments of, of actual total uninhibited joy uh, head up, head, headed by our new uh, Lord and Savior, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Yeah, what a great moment. Um, yeah, and it, it's so weird that, like, because NB it was on NBC this year, and that used to be like some of the best Emmys were when NBC had it in the network cycle. They had those great years when Conan hosted, and then Jimmy Fallon, I thought, did a great job, and that show was put together really well that year. So it is is a shame that like NBC used to be the sort of one of maybe. The and, best I, and I just and I just have to add this. I just have to get this out because I'm really sick and tired of of Emmy shows that try to put the announcer as an integral part of the show. Um, you know, they did it a few years ago with, I can't even remember his name, but he bothered me. Um, and then this one, Sam J, who basically, you know, completely like, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Introduced uh, Gael Garcia Bernal and Kerry Washington as two hot presenters and couldn't pronounce anybody's name correctly if her life depended on it. I'm like, you have one job. Hmm. You know, just stop it. Just stop with the announcers becoming integral parts of the ceremony. Yeah, with, uh, with that bad pronunciation of names, I thought I had been asked to um, do the announcing at the end. <laughs> David, David, should ask what, you. David, what are your thoughts? I agree on the ceremony and it went to um, in years past when they used to do all of the Spanish genre categories together. I really was not a big fan of that because I love, you know, some of the big cat comedy awards. Can you guys hear David okay? I can't hear David at no, all. It's, oh, it's David, scary. okay. I was wondering that was just on my end. David, um, can you maybe um, turn off the mic, turn it back on, and we'll we'll come back to you in a, in a tick. I'm just, I know sometimes a refresh here, going out and come back in here. We want to. We want to know what David had to say. Um, so maybe touch on something you brought up, uh, Tony. Um, is the disappointment for Barry fans tonight? Um, a lot of people thought Bill Hader had a great chance in lead actor, and that it was uh, had a great chance to take out director. Actually, Bill Hader had a good chance to win a couple of Emmys tonight. Um, it fell short in both of those to the uh, rampaging Ted Lasso. Um, who was carving up the awards tonight after a bit of a, an underwhelming creative arts turn. Um, what do we think accounts for that? How do you feel about that, Tony? Um, I'm not, in, in many ways, I'm not shocked um, mm. because, uh, you know, to come back after three years um, is a long time for any show. Um, so there's, there's bound to be a, a, a break there. Um, also, I think that, you know, may, maybe some voters didn't respond to how dark this season was because this was the darkest season of Barry yet. Um, so I think that that certainly could have played a role. Um, I, I, I thought that there were certain elements that would kind of break through in, in terms of, you know, there's a certain meta aspect of Barry. Um, and, you know, it's it, I still find it really hard. The one that really puzzles me, even though, and Charlie, you probably have, I, I know you have a thought about this, of, of why 710 North didn't win. Um, because that that whole episode to me is a masterpiece. But but you you were you were hesitant on that one. I was just hesitant. I was just hesitant because, it, it, and I know that it's, it's a very different thing uh, than it was uh, three years uh, 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 three years ago, uh, when Ronnie the Ronnie Lilly episode lost because that was the year of the Fleabag sweep, but I still felt like there that I thought that because I thought that uh, Boy from Six B from Only Murders was going to win that one, but I for some reason I just didn't feel like 
Hater was going to win director. I just, it was just, it was just, a, and I know that's not, that's not really something I can like justify. It was just a feeling that I felt that they wouldn't, that I felt that the director's branch was, if they weren't going to go for it with that kind of an episode before, I had a very tough time seeing them doing it, uh, seeing them do it again, especially when you had such a style, another very stylistic, uh, notable episode like uh, Boy from 6B, although it ended up not being that either. Yeah, and I think like Ted Lasso was the show of the year, so like it was the most popular show um, for the Emmy voters that were in that directing category. And I do wonder, like, that's a great directed episode. The way that comes together, they are going between the way that episode. It's not a big car chase. It's not um, um, a, a, a show without dialogue like the, the Boy Six B, but it brings a lot of things together and the way it goes between Ted and uh, Rebecca talking about the death of their father is a beautifully directed episode. And, and I do think. And that was yeah. the thing that I thought was going to help them take the Emmy for editing because uh, mm. they were nominated for that episode. And I thought those, <laughs> but it, and it didn't uh, pan out there. Barry actually won there, yeah. uh, but, um, uh, but it was able, and it is an incredibly well-directed episode. Uh, so I, I mean I can't fault them for that, and it's uh, and it and they just seem to respond to it more. I was I was more surprised. Oh no, let's we haven't heard from David, so let's go to David. Yeah, I, I just need to say there were two episodes last year for Ted Lasso, I believe, nominated directing yes. too. So it had both things. So I didn't have to worry about that this year. But the fact it got two nominations last year also says that amongst the directors branch, there was there's a lot of Ted Lasso love. Uh, David, Wade, Barry, missing out. Ted Lasso winning that directing award. And yeah, that. I think when I came back, Tony was making this point, but it's something I made in our chat too, which is when you take extended time off, when you're on such a long hiatus and you kind of cede the momentum of the field to another show, I think it's very hard to get momentum back. Um, mm. You know, we saw that with we saw that with the final season of Veep, which yeah. you know some say the quality dipped in the last season, but going on, you know, sitting out an Emmy cycle really let another show kind of seize that momentum. So that I think was Barry's problem. I didn't think Barry was going to do extremely well tonight, but I did predict it for directing, you know, as, as you've all been saying, you know, why we thought it might win directing. But, um, you know, I also thought Bill Hader would win. I thought that show coming back at the right time, you know, Ted Lasso hasn't been on the air in so long. It aired in the last Emmy cycle when that was, when voting for the last Emmy cycle was running that, you know, that would give Bill Hader an advantage. But I just think when you're off for that long, you know, it, it's very hard to come back strong and actually win. You know, it's one thing to get the nominations as one of the, you know, five, six, seven, eight best programs. But to actually win the prize when you've kind of taken that time off is very hard to come back from. That's a great point about the momentum, really. Like, you know, in that final season of Beep, I think, is a perfect example. Um, I don't think the quality really dipped for last season at all, and it definitely didn't dip as much as the final season of Game of Thrones quality that True. won a ridiculous amount of Emmys uh, but was coming off the heat of the, its wins here before. So, yeah, no, I think that's a really good point, David. Um, and I do think um, there's something about the Ted... Jason, like, that Ted Lasso is such a lovable, huggable, iconic sort of character that I think that also, like, helps helps him with that category. And he had, a, he had that funeral episode too. So he got, you know, an incredible performance too. But um, I am glad that Bill Hader has won Best Actor twice before. Because I, I, for me, they're both just great, iconic performances. Um, speaking of shows that were able to overcome that momentum loss, Succession, which took a year, a, a year away, The Crown came in, maybe fortunate enough to compete against The Crown that was... Um, so uh, maybe that sort of helped it, whereas uh, um, Barry came back to a um, Ted Lasso with wind in its sail. But um, what Succession was able to take a best drama series this year. What do we think about that and its drama series wins? Uh, maybe particularly the Matthew McFadden one, where it was able to overcome vote splitting and all that sort of stuff. David, let's leave with you this time. Yeah, I was thrilled that Matthew won. I actually predicted him. I had him in the top slot since the Prediction Center opened was really tempted to switch to Kieran today. And I said, you know, for some reason, I didn't think I should do it. I'm glad I didn't. And you know what? I think maybe Tony or somebody had made this point earlier that when you watch Succession season three, especially in hindsight, 
Um, it's such a strong Tom season. Um, you know, I interviewed some of the cast this year, and when I was going back and rewatching the episodes to prepare, you really just follow the arc of Tom's journey um, as he's fretting about going to prison and, um, you know, the kind of depths of despair that he takes the character to are really very moving um, for a character that's often, you know, hard to warm to. Um, just an extraordinary performance. So thrilled for Matthew um, and thrilled for the series, too. I mean, you know, I had some issues with some of the earlier episodes of season three, but I thought it finished incredibly strong in those last kind of five or six episodes were extraordinarily good. So extremely well-deserved writing win and series win. I'm really glad for them. Yeah, it's a it's great show. Like, and that is such a great season three. So I was really happy with those wins. And I agree, Matthew, I thought was the best performance of the year over the course of the whole season. Yeah. So very deserved win. Uh, Charlie, any thoughts on this? Um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a, 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 it's not a bad win by any, by any stretch of, you know, everything. This is not like, um, West Wing season four. Sorry, Matt. What? Um, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Sorry, no that was a season. Uh, yeah. We've got, we've got, we, we have drunkenly gotten into this many times. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> Drunken it, and it, other it, substances. It's, it's, it's no, it by no means a, a, a bad win. It just, it, as opposed to, it's weird because Ted Lasso was also a repeat win, but the the Succession one felt a little bit more underwhelming because uh, there was a bit more to me. There was a bit more suspense going into it because by at that point, you know, it had only it had won two. Squid Game had won two, and then and Ozark had won one. Uh, unfortunately, uh, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, Severance didn't win anything. But it felt like like there could be that sort of like disruption, like Squid Game could actually come in and win it. But um, yeah, so it, it, that's why, it, it, at least in the immediate aftermath, it kind of feels underwhelming. But overall, I think it's a, I think it's a good win. And uh, I just wish there was, a, it had been spread out a bit more, like maybe we had seen, you know, uh, someone from Severance win supporting, win supporting actor or, you know, something where it was just a bit more spread out. But, you know, thank God we didn't have any like clean sweeps this year. Yes, yes. I was going to say, after The Crown, it seemed like it was, like, very well spread out after The Crown. But, yeah, you know, I, I don't disagree, Charles. Uh, Tony, what do you think? Well, you know, one of the things I think is interesting is that is that we start to, you know, one of the things we like to say is that the episodes no longer matter. But I'm not sure that that's always true, because if you take uh, McFadden's win and you take Shirley Ralph's win, um, I think think, and I think you can even make this argument with, say, Julia Garner, um, is that whether the episodes matter or not, who knows, but they don't hurt because kind of the key thing of what boosted those three, I think, in particular, and to a certain, um, to a certain degree also Zendaya, um, is, is these episodes. Everybody knew about Tom being the centerpiece of season three of Succession. Everybody knew that really Cheryl Lee Ralph had the best submission uh, for Abbott Elementary. Uh, so uh, I don't think that, that we can discount, I don't think we should discount episode submissions as much as we sometimes would like to, um, because I was this close to predicting McFadden, and I'm kicking myself for not but, doing it now. But I thought he submitted not a very good episode for himself. I like that episode. Well, it was it, good. It, yeah, he it, should have submitted. There was one earlier in the season where he was unreal. Like it was just, I watched that and thought he's winning the Emmy this year. And then he didn't submit. Uh, yeah, it. I mean, I thought the finale, like you said, Tony, everybody remembers that final scene in the finale, of course, and Tom's betrayal. But he doesn't have very much to do in the episode. Um, I thought he had better better choices um, because really that impact, you know, is him walking in and Logan, you know, patting him on the shoulder, job well done. You know, it's uh, it, it's a good scene and it's an impactful scene. But and as far as a tape, when you have to watch, you know, he doesn't have much to do in that hour. Even the the one before set in Italy, he has so much to do with Sarah, who I wish was winning. One of these years, maybe before the series is over, Sarah Snook can can win because she's so good on the series. Um, and I wish, you know, I almost wish she had won this year when Matthew won because they're, you know, they're so intertwined on the series. It's, you know, I, I'd love to see her win. Mm. Yeah, no, like, um, 
it's a good yeah, yeah no good good points guys so we've got um i think um but I, I do think like it's hard to find like we can debate matthew mcfadden's tape but like there aren't many bad tapes that won this year like whether the tapes made a difference or not like it's hard to fault any of those performances that were submitted from jason sudeikis to julia garner they were all like powerhouse performances that um that and and you know like not all powerhouses because some of them are more comedic but um it's not like you're going how would in the tape system you could see a scenario where we would have had the same winners as tonight yeah that's that's my point that's my yeah, point that's i think point, i think if it had gone purely off a of buzz um you know because sometimes that does happen um particularly in this new system but then you have you have Shirley Ralph who, you know, of a lot of the submitted episodes, I think it's hard to argue that hers was not near the top of all categories because it was one of those textbook perfect submissions. Um, and she had kind of a similar, uh, it, it's so funny because I think Shirley, Shirley Ralph would have won under the old tape system too because she had a great arc in Janelle James's episode as well. Um, where she blackmails, she basically finds herself blackmailing a member of her church. So it, 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 it's one of those things where it's like, you don't know how much they impact it, but you can't discount uh, yeah. that they might have an impact. Now, Severance, really underperformed tonight. I think it was a show with a lot of industry support. We saw that with nominations, but also just, I think there was industry buzz. I think I even interviewed people from other shows that said they were enjoying Succession in the campaign time so what do you think like is it like are people a bit disappointed that severance couldn't have done a bit better oh absolutely absolutely that that show is one of my favorites and um you know i that's that's why i was hoping you know hoping i was initially thinking it could win writing i, I was initially thinking right after the nominations that it could win drama series um but uh then i wised up and uh Put in succession but you know i but i i thought it i thought it stood a really good chance in writing or directing i thought i think i, I know a few quite a few people were predicting patricia arquette as their uh as their long shot and i thought she stood a really good chance of it because it was great seeing her be you know playing a batshit insane role again and um you know i always i also i even thought that adam scott was a real what well, should have been should have been more of a factor in this year's actor race because i think i think you know what he does in that show is sensational i think i had him in third now for yeah any other thoughts on severance i think it's really well positioned for the future i mean you know mm -hmm. it 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 underperformed at the main ceremony of course as we know it didn't take home anything but you know i think it it could build on the number of nominations it got the broad amount of appeal that it has with different branches, I think it could really actually win a lot more, you know, as it progresses. Um, it's it's not, you know, it's not out of the gate a barn burner, but I think it could build over time. Now, for all the Severance fans that are disappointed tonight, put yourself in the shoes of Better Call Saul fans um, who have now <laughs> gone through 46 Emmy nominations or something. I might have the number a bit off. You lose, you lose count out, yeah, it's 46 nominations without a single win um they have one more shot next year but their big uh battle is going to be memories if it can last 12 months um so well amc is going to put everything they have into billboards and direct mailers saying hey your last chance do it now 46 oh. nominations zero wins should be the billboard for next season with a big picture of Bob Go for it. that means racing. you dickwads yeah so no uh, like i really hope they can do it next year like i really like that show is unreal and to not have an emmy is insane um so very disappointed we're, we're you know pulling from next year guys hopefully the emmys remember um so what uh, what 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 do we like what do we have a favorite winner from the drama categories oh uh from the drama category yeah um i was very partial to uh uh i i know since i'm in the, in the tank for uh squid game but i was very partial to the two wins that they had uh in the speeches from uh uh 
uh, Lee Jung Jae and um, I, I, I can't remember the creator's name, but the creator winning directing. And I liked how he, how, he, how at the end he said, it won't be, hopefully it won't be my last time up here. <laughs> yeah, I think I was partial to Zendaya. Um, not just because that's one of the great Emmy performances I've ever seen, just her in that episode. Uh, and, but I thought she gave a, a, a lovely speech too. And it's great to see her actually like get to accept an award in front of everybody. So, so I, I think Zendaya was the one that made me happiest. David? Yeah, Matthew for me, just because I, I really, I didn't think he was going to win. Um, seemed like momentum was not, was not with him, but that was my favorite performance from Succession season three. So glad that he was recognized. And David, what did you think of the show? Like, because we didn't get your thoughts, just your overall thoughts. What are you sort of feeling about like, yeah. post Emmys? What's at the forefront of your mind? I mean, I agree with a lot of what's been said. What I was going to say earlier was I used to not be a fan of when they used to do the genre categories in blocks where we'd have all seven comedy categories or six and then move on and kind of do them in blocks. But at least then you had some kind of structure and continuity to the ceremony. I thought the way they kind of layered these categories was so sloppy and confusing, especially because they wanted to introduce things with different montages. So you'd see a montage and get two drama categories, and then we're in a different genre and two more categories. You know, you don't have to present them all kind of in one go, but some better kind of uh, <laughs> way to do it. This was really very sloppy, was not a fan at all. Well, last year, I mean, if you took out like those sort of like those things that really abruptly, you know, took your focus off the ceremony and took the focus off, you know, make, uh, continuing the, the pace of the ceremony, mm -hmm. I think it would have been it would have been all right. Because uh, I, I mean, last year, I thought it, I thought they did fine with the way that they with the order that they presented it in mm -hmm. and the way that and the way that the ceremony flowed, at least. Um, Um, do, also, by the way, I have the um, winners of our Gold Derby prediction. So all season long, David. from around the world have been predicting the Emmy Awards. And we have our winners. Let me just get up the old results for us. Let's see um, who the winners are. So our number one user, congratulations, this is all published on goldderby.com. And look, Prediction Center is still open um, for our Oscars. So get, in, get straight after Emmys, go predict the Oscars. Um, it's, oh, no, I'm going to do what Oh, announced. God, yeah. not a name. <laughs> Vera Sokolianskaya has won with a trivia score of 88%. 88%. That is, I believe, 22 out of 25 categories. So congratulations! It's one of the um, it's one of the Ernst and Young accountants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Nick, Take the mic. Nick, Nico second with twenty one out of twenty five, and shirt is second uh, or third with twenty one out of twenty five. Must have just uh, Nico to get that second place finish. Must have uh, used his uh, power bet well or his power prediction. So there you go. Congratulations, Vera, Nico, and Shirt for getting the top three spots. But what about amongst but us who was, Derby editors? But who was who was in the top who ten? Four? <laughs> what, sorry, who was who was the top? Not oh, bad. No, who was number four of all number, uh, four. I don't know. I just no, I just have three on the well, screen. I think, me. I think you need to scroll down. But don't we force? <laughs> yeah. Oh, David. Forward. Congratulations. Yeah, How many did you get right? I must be like eighty percent. You got twenty out of not 24. bad. Not bad. Oh my gosh, Shocking. David! I made a very last minute change on comedy series that paid off very well uh, because yeah. I had I had Abbott after Creative Arts. Luca convinced me to predict Hacks. I had Hacks from six forty to seven something this evening, and I switched back to Ted Lasso, and that really helped. I never really wavered from Ted Lasso or Succession in the drama uh, in the lead categories just because I was like, there was so much uncertainty surrounding both. I just went with what had won before and I just sort of like thought, oh, I could definitely be wrong. I thought these were like barn burner races. I thought they were like really great races. But at the same time, I thought, you know what? Like, 
I'm not certain enough about nut set. I'm just going to go with what's won before. But, uh, David, your predictions were much better than mine because looking at the editor's predictions, uh, Paul Sheehan is in first place with 80%. Tom O'Neill, our uh, founder and chief, is uh, next with 76%. We then have our producer and director, Riley, and you, Charlie, tied at 72%. And uh, better then, than I thought I was doing. Yeah, 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 I'm not too bad. And then uh, better than I thought. I thought I'd be at the bottom this year, but uh, you've got me, Chris Boomer Beecham, who is at the Emmys right now, or maybe leaving, trying to get out of the car park, probably. Um, um, and Rob LeCurry, who was on with us earlier, all on 68%. Um, I know I should go through all the rest because then we start to get a bit embarrassing. How did you go for your predictions, Tony? I was right in the middle with the 68, so I'm with you yeah. and Marcus and Good company. Daniel. Right. And, yeah. You know. Well, David, David, just I know you've talked about it a bit already, but what was the secret to your great predictions, David? I have no idea. I'm shocked. I mean, a lot of, you know, I, I stuck with a lot of the categories that Gold Derby got right. Um, I didn't mm. really overthink some of those category front runners. Um, I think Matthew paid off quite a bit. That was kind yeah. of, um, you know, an out of bounds choice. Um, Julia Garner, I think she was first in our predictions, but you know, Ozark, I can't believe that, you know, d despite two consecutive years of Ozark doing terribly in terms of wins, you know, she's won back to back um, with a year, with a year off in between. Um, and then that comedy series race, I mean, that could have broke so many ways. I do actually think, you know, especially w while we were watching the ceremony, it was so neck and neck between Ted Lasso and Abbott. I mean, when Abbott won, it had casting going into it. It took home an acting prize. It took home writing. Jason won, which I wasn't expecting. It, Ted Lasso won directing. I mean, I think this was a lot closer than, in hindsight, it feels like, you know, Ted Lasso was an obvious choice. Um, but I really feel like this was a very close race. It was really exciting to watch it unfold on the ceremony, too. I was skeptical whether Abbott was second, and I I think I was completely off on that. Abbott was the second place um, show, and I do think good things could be in store for in the Emmys in the future. I, in better things. I will say I am delighting in uh, how everyone was, uh, how there were all these people that were switching comedy series their pick to hacks, and because uh, like I said the pre-show, I had initially had hacks in the top slot. And I and but when I heard all these people were switching to hacks, I was like, nope, I'm going to stay out of this. I'm not going to make a last minute switch on this. Thank God I did. Well, we're, we're near we're near the end of our coverage for tonight. So um, maybe if anyone in the in the comments wants to shoot us shoot us up a question to touch on, if there's something we haven't talked about that you want to while we're waiting, may some of those come in. Gentlemen, is there anything you want to? want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet you've been if, itching to get stuck into if any of the if anyone who ends up producing the emmys next year is watching call us we know we know how to do this right this is what we do bring us on as a consultant you don't even have to pay you can pay me in craft services look at this i'll i'll, I'll work for that i'll work for donuts for christ's sake just give just give me a better constructed ceremony for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they have gotten it right in the past. They have you to know, take like, oxy you know, for this. Yeah. <laughs> anything else? Uh, Tony, anything you want to touch on that we haven't touched on yet? Uh, you know, stop making announcers part of the ceremony. Um, it never works out well. It um, only did once. When? Hodgman, when John Hodgman did it. Yeah, okay, Hodgman was good. Hodgman was good. Um you know, we're going to have some we're going to have some new blood next year because we've got some uh you know, Ozark is not returning. Um but for God's sakes, give me a ceremony that makes sense. That has any through line, please. So I'm and not going what? And yeah. don't ever 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 Play off Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. Hopefully um, we've got we got so, yes, no, that's a very good point. I think um one question came in. Did Better Call Saul get hurt by splitting its season into two halves? 
like I would go with no. Like I don't think if it had all aired before the Emmys, it would have won. Isn't that sort of the thing it. that shows do now? Is they break yeah. their final season into multiple parts so they can get multiple Emmys? Like I, don't I think. think yeah. Go ahead, no, Matt. Go ahead. Go no. no, I was going to say, I think it helped them tremendously get these nominations. I don't think yeah. Rhea Seahorn would have been nominated had these episodes, you know, not been airing at the right time. But I think it's really hurt them for next year. I think trying to carry any momentum yes. from these final episodes into the 23 cycle is, it, I think that's, that's, you know, it was a bet. It was a bet that if we air these now, maybe we can get wins now. But, you know, the trade-off is that next year is going to be incredibly tough. And I think the same yes, is probably for Only Murders in the Building, too, depending on what happens with season three. Yes, I think that is a good point. I think it probably didn't, like, it hasn't hurt it for the, I don't think it, like, oh, because people, oh, we'll give it next year. I think this year it did as well as it would have, however they um, did it, and maybe even helped them a bit get some of those nominations. But um, next year it, it definitely would have been an advantage for them to sit on those episodes for next year, um, for next year's Emmys. But you never know. Um, someone also asked the question of what did we have, uh, like what shows are returning next year? And to be honest, I've been so focused on this year's Emmys, I don't necessarily know. Does anyone know if any shows are back or sitting out these years? I know Squid Game probably won't be back next year because I know, I, I, I believe I read that the uh, creator is still uh, coming up with what the second season will be. Oh. Uh, so my guess is that he it will not be completed in time for next year's um, I don't know about Severance or say, I'm, I'm guessing Severance and Succession will, will be back. I just don't know when. Yeah. We got, I, I mean, we got the trailer to season two of Abbott. We know that's going to be coming back, um, next, mm -hmm. uh, next week, I think. With a full season, with a full, with a full 20, I think 18, is it 18 or is it actually 22? I don't know how many episodes are in it. I had heard yeah. that it was going to be 22. Ooh, that's fun. It'd be nice for a 22 episode show to win again. Like that'd be really cool. And as I said, um, we're still we're still in the we're still in the dark on when the hell season three of Ted Lasso is gonna gonna premiere. Yeah, so season when Ted Lasso is gonna, gonna, gonna come out next, like, before next June. Yeah, that's the thing with the Emmys. It's so I, I don't think uh, COVID helped at all with any of this. Just keeping track of when shows are coming out, when and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, um, and, we, and there's some. Shows that'll be returning, uh, like The Boys has already aired its third season. That got nominated for its last go around. What about the is the Crown going to be back too? I believe so. I believe so. This is the the first Amelda Staunton uh, so season. Next year we could be gearing up for a Crown Succession showdown depending on when things air and stuff. It'll be so interesting that's... to see with what's going to happen with White Lotus, too, because um, we know that that kind of second installment is airing. Have they even decided what they're going to do with, like, categorizing that? Like, are they going to put that in drama because Jennifer Coolidge is returning? I know they made a ruling, obviously, on this year, but it'll be interesting to see what they do with that and and how it does if it has to move, you know, categories, if it'll, if it'll be as strong of a contender. Yeah, part of me... Part of me wonders. Part of me wonders if they'll just keep it in limited series, but make Jennifer Coolidge yeah. ineligible. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, that they also could. They also. Uh, I mean, they did with Big Little Lies. They that that was one that also won in the yep. uh, limited series race in the in the limited series race, and then the next year went to uh, drama. Yeah. It's very challenging to parlay, and I think Big Little Lies ran into this, to parlay a successful miniseries into a successful series because it was so self-contained, the initial sort of concept, it can be hard to carry that on. Downton Abbey. Unless you're Downton well. Abbey. <laughs> yeah, Downton Abbey did it very well, um, but the others, uh, Big Little Lies struggled. So it'll be interesting to see what camp the White Lotus falls into. Um, yeah. Are there any last questions or thoughts people have, or is it time to put this imaginary dead cat to bed? <laughs> as long as we, as long as we have Shirley Ralph sing a, a, a eulogy for the imaginary dead cat. Yeah. <laughs> and again, what is with this in memoriam shit where you are, where uh, you have the camera away uh, well. from these, from the displays 
and then you can't read the text Horrible. that's on them. Also, if we're going to get clips, they have to figure, and I'm sure they know how to do this, they need to wire the audio so that the applause from the audience doesn't overshadow the dialogue that's being spoken in these clips. Because yeah. at least a, a good like 25 to 30 percent of them, I could not hear what they were saying because the audience was so loud. And of course, and I'm not denigrating the audience for that, but the the, the audio should have been better. We know you have the technology. Emmy producers. You can make it better, faster. I'm getting a stronger. feeling we didn't love the show. Like, it's the really? sort of sense I'm getting from uh, the panel uh, chat. So, uh, yeah. Go to goldderby.com, go. read my review. Yeah. Well, we've learned a lot of things about the Emmys this year, about uh, maybe uh, things not to do when putting on an award show, but also the um, power of optimism, from Ted Lasso and uh, maybe the power of cynicism from Succession. Uh, we, the Emmys have taught us that maybe in comedy you need a soul, but um, maybe in drama, boo, souls. So thanks, everyone, for watching uh, Gold Derby Emmys coverage. Thanks for joining us on the Derby for another crazy year of Emmy Awards and Giddy up, we're getting right back on because there's Oscar predictions at Gold Derby and we've already got contenders for next year's Emmys that have aired. Better call Saul's in the tank. The boys are in the tank. Uh, so we are ready to go and uh, keep talking. So join Gold Derby forum discussions. Get onto goldderby.com to make your predictions for the Oscars and uh, we'll, we'll see you on the track. Thanks, guys. And thanks to everyone who joined